Catholic students, I am Amanda, and we are coming at you with another Truth and Consequences video. And today we have the lovely Louisa Ferguson. Why don't you introduce yourself a little bit? Hi guys, my name's Louisa Ferguson. Um, my husband is um, a new pastor here at Austin Oaks Church. He is the pastor of Next Generation Ministries. Um, the really cool thing is though, he used to be the youth pastor here about six or seven years yeah, ago. He used to be my youth pastor. That's crazy, right? <laughs> She used to be a young little one. It was fabulous. Um, so it's been really fun to get to come back to Austin Oaks Church and um, spend some time with Amanda, who actually used to be one of our youth. Yeah. I'm really excited to spend some time with you guys today. Uh, we've got three boys. Uh, BJ and I both have three boys. Uh, we've got a nine-year-old, an eight-year-old, and a six-year-old. Bunch of boys. It's a crazy household, Amanda. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and today we are going to be talking about anxiety, which is something that I know a lot of you guys deal with. Louisa and I both actually deal with um, pretty severe anxiety sometimes. Um, and we've had a lot of discussions about it. Um, and we wanted to come and talk to you guys about it and what the Bible specifically says about anxiety. So Louisa, how would you describe anxiety for any of those who maybe haven't experienced it or aren't really sure if they have experienced it? Right. So anxiety, is I kind of looked it up last night on the diction in the dictionary to kind of see, but um, anxiety is uh, a fear or a worry about an outcome. Mm -hmm. And some of us experience worry and stress. You've heard words like worry, stress, anxiety. Growing up, we didn't really use the term anxiety a lot. It was just you're worried, you're stressed out. Yeah. But it's fear of the outcome. And this could be something that is situational. Um, you have a test coming up, maybe um, a final. Maybe you have a really big basketball game um, and you're nervous about the outcome. Maybe um, you have a dance recital and you've never performed in front of a big group before. And so you have some fear about the outcome. But there's also some anxiety that can be a little bit larger and really um, big situations. For example, if your parents are going through a divorce, if you're moving schools, think about COVID. Yeah. This was a time where we didn't really know the outcome and there was a lot of fear. So that uncertainty, that worry is anxiety. Mm -hmm. And some of us experience it, like you and I, we've talked yeah. about this, we experience it um, to a greater degree, mm -hmm. and sometimes it lingers. Yeah. Um, what are some of the like the physical effects that you have when you're struggling with anxiety? Yeah. So when I experience um, intense anxiety, mm -hmm. I go, I have panic attacks and anxi right. anxiety attacks, and it's um, I get very. Um, focused on right. whatever it is that is causing me anxiety, and I spiral is how I yeah. call it. I cannot stop thinking about it, no matter right. what. I can't um, get out of that thought spiral. Yes. And my heartbeat quickens a yeah. lot. I can feel it, I feel it physically. I feel right. my body tensing up. I feel almost shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely a physical response to right. the anxiety. Yeah, and a lot of us do, I experience that too, absolutely. I call it, um, my husband calls it anxiety tummy. And it's kind <laughs> of like butterflies, you've heard about butterflies in your tummy, but it's it can be even stronger than that, almost yeah. like nausea. Yeah. Um, so there is a physical response. Um, and then like you said, the mental, and I think about it like a um, roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Think about those roller coasters where, I feel like an old lady when I say roller coaster ride, but think about a roller coaster, one of those loops that you just can't get off of. And sometimes it's, you're uh, in a high state of anxiety and sometimes yeah. it feels like you can handle it. And then you loop back around and you just can't get off of that. Yeah. Thinking about that one thing over and over and over and over again. Um, and I, I know that everybody has a lot of different um, things that they're anxious about. I think about like relationships. If anybody's in an unhealthy relationship or um, there's some, a friendship that you're struggling with and you can't kind of get out of that worry and you keep thinking yeah. about it over and over and over again. That anxiety um, is exhausting. Yeah, absolutely. So what um, does the Bible specifically say about anxiety? Right. Um, so I did a little bit of research, um, a little bit of a word study to see how many times um, the idea of anxiety, fear, stress, mm -hmm. worry comes up in the Bible. And it's over 350 times that um, the Bible mentions the idea of um, fear not, do not worry, mm -hmm. don't be anxious. Yeah. So obviously the Lord knew this is something <laughs> that we were going to struggle with as human beings. Yeah. Um, and so what I love about the Bible is it doesn't just tell us amazing stories about who God is, but it's, um, it tells us God gives us steps of how we can bring him our fear and bring him our anxiety. But one thing I did want to say is 
We are not the only ones. This generation yeah. is not the only ones who have felt anxiety and fear. Just two examples of people in the Bible. David, King David, who wrote a lot of the Psalms. Mm -hmm. If you've read any of the Psalms, you see they're full of emotion. And there's a lot that have fear and anxiety. He yeah. is scared because he's being pursued. He doesn't know the next step. He doesn't know what to do in these difficult situations. And he cries out to God. And guess what? God can handle that. Yeah. Like God can handle our fear and our anxiety. And he's also a great example of someone who does bring his fear and yes. anxiety to the Lord yes. often, all the time. Right. <laughs> and he, and God is like, it's okay, bring it. You yeah. can tell me all your fears. You can tell me all your, all your anxieties. Another person, my favorite person of the Bible, <laughs> good old Jesus, perfect, never sinned. God in the flesh mm -hmm. came to earth he still had some moments of stress. Yeah. If we think about the Garden of Gethsemane, um, right before he's crucified, he is praying to the Lord. And he is saying, if you can take this from me, take it, but I'm still gonna do what you ask. So much so he is so stressed that he is sweating blood. Like he is experiencing, he didn't sin, yeah. but he is still experiencing that feeling. So times when I'm struggling with anxiety, I think, oh my gosh, I am totally sinning and I'm a terrible person. It's okay to have these feelings. It's mm -hmm. what do we do with them? Yeah, that's exactly it. Oh, I love that. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to add about anything specifically that the Bible says about anxiety? Oh, right. yeah. Sorry, I got sidetracked. I got so excited talking about Jesus. <laughs> um, so like I said, there are so many passages in scripture that talks about anxiety or um, fear or stress, but there's two little sections that I really love and I go to. There's one um, in Matthew 6 that talks about, um, should we fear what to wear? What are we going to eat? It talks about um, how... Um, God says, do not worry about those things. Don't worry about what mm -hmm. you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, where you're going to live. And he describes how the birds in the air, they don't, they don't worry about what they're going to eat. Yeah. The lilies of the field, they don't worry about what clothes they're going to wear because the Lord takes care of them. Mm -hmm. um, and I love it because he addresses it and he says, I am in control. So don't, you don't need to worry about that. Yeah. Let me handle that for you. And then there's another section in Philippians, um, Philippians 4, and it says, do not be anxious, go to the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you are having fears, pray to him, go to him. So he is giving an invitation. He is not saying, oh, you had fears. Amanda, you had anxiety, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> he says, okay, you have them. Now let me show you what to do with them. Yeah, yeah, and that's great. And so there are a lot of ways that we can deal with anxiety. Um, and I know sometimes it's it's hard, I think, for some people to hear some of those verses because it it sounds at at first glance to be like, well, just don't don't fear, like just just stop, stop, <laughs> just stop it, just stop it. <laughs> and that's not exactly what it's saying. So how do we deal with anxiety? Right, because you know it is really easy to look at it and say, oh well, God says don't fear. Don't be anxious. So just stop. So just pray and just stop. Um, we're more complicated than that. Yeah. It's a lot harder than that. Um, but I love how he gives us step by step. In that one passage in um, Philippians, he, it actually in the next section, in, um, it tells us that we can go to the Lord. We can pray to him. And then he also says, think on all the good things. Think yeah. on what is good, what is right. So that means spend time in the word. Mm -hmm. Find out more about who God is. Think, think on and pray on and meditate on all the wonderful things that God has done. Mm -hmm. And then it also says, um, so seek what is good, but then it also says, pray to him and go to him and rejoice. Mm -hmm. So when we can, yes, we're dealing with stress. So you and I deal with it a lot. Yeah. Like, COVID, this is really, really hard. Like this is something new that we've never struggled with before. Yeah. But when I can think on all the amazing things that God has done, how mm -hmm. he still is in control. Yeah. This virus is, is something we've never dealt with before, mm -hmm. but we still have a God who is in control of everything. And when I think on all the amazing things that he has done, when I can look back in scripture and see how he, um, he saved our world, saved us by giving his son up for us. I can rejoice in him yeah. and I can put my focus on him instead of the test that I need to study for yeah. or how I'm going to perform. Um, I like to think about it as a drop in the ocean. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if anybody before 
the beaches got like scary COVID <laughs> and people like went to the beach. We went to the beach this summer. We love the beach. One thing I love about the beach is I love to sit and just look at how fast the ocean is. Yeah. It is so huge. And we are like a tiny drop of water in this huge ocean. Mm -hmm. Now that drop is incredibly important. We are so important in God's story because he loves us so much. But the bigger picture is his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And in Matthew, in, our, in that verse in Matthew, let me look at my notes, Matthew 6, um, he tells us to seek first the kingdom. Seek him first. Look yeah. at how vast he is and his great plan. And then our small test that we're nervous about, if he's able to create this ocean, then he's able to take care of us yeah. for our test or our dance recital or this, you know, bad breakup that we're going through. Yeah. He's in control. And when we focus on him being in control, it takes the fear off of us. Yeah. It can kind of take that burden off our shoulders. I mean, that's why Jesus died on the cross for us. He took on our burdens so that we could have freedom, freedom in Jesus. Yeah. So the more we seek him, the more we learn about how great he is, um, the more we have a right perspective of our problems and our situation versus God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. I love that. So what would you say to um, any of our students who might be thinking or feeling, I know that I, you and I have both actually felt this before, but like that feeling of like, I've brought it to the Lord, I've prayed, mm -hmm. am I just not, I, I'm still experiencing this, like am I just pr not praying enough? Am I not being a good enough, good enough at like letting go of it? Mm -hmm. um, what is that lie and where does that kind of come from? I think that is so hard for all of us because we want to perform. Mm -hmm. We want to do something. We are taught in our society. We are taught at school. We are taught at home. Um, do your dishes. <laughs> perform. Um, if you work really, really hard um, in football practice, you'll be successful in the game. Like those yeah. are all, that's okay. That's part of our life. We cannot do anything to gain God's love. Mm -hmm. We can't do anything to have him love us more. Yeah. So the more we pray, the more we align ourselves with him. Um, but sometimes it doesn't mean the problem is going to go away, which is really, really hard. But it doesn't mean that he loves us any less. Yeah. The reason Jesus died on the cross for us is so that we wouldn't have to strive anymore. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have to offer sacrifices like they did in the Old Testament yeah. to be able to have our sins washed away. Um, so we can't do anything for him to love us more. Yeah. It is not a cause and effect relationship. He is always there and he always loves us. Unfortunately, though, sometimes we will continue to have our struggles yeah. because God is teaching us something yeah. and that's really hard. But I look back on like a timeline in, in history class, if you've ever had to do a timeline or whatever, <laughs> you look back on your history with the Lord and how he has shown up and he's yeah. always been in control from the beginning of time. And even if we had to go through a season of um, anxiety and stress, he is still in control. Yeah. Um, but and he's still teaching and us. He's still teaching us and we're learning things through this. Yeah. Um, I know that the more that um, I have struggled with anxiety for a long time, but I've gotten to have amazing conversation with like people like you yeah. and other friends and younger folks who are struggling. And I can say, you know what? I still love God and God is still good. And I've struggled through some things, but he's still there for me. Yeah. Um, there are some things that we can do like journaling. I don't know if, or, do you journal much? I sometimes do. Yeah. I go in and out of in phases. And out of, yeah. Some of us journal, some of us don't. Journaling our fears down, identifying yeah. our fears. That's something that we can do. The lie, like you said, like what is the lie that we're believing? Mm -hmm. If I don't perform in this, um, if I don't get first place in the track meet, what is the lie I'm going to believe that I'm not worthy? Yeah. Well, what does scripture say? God tells us that we are worthy. Yeah. Winning that track, that um, winning first place in the track meet isn't going to make God love me anymore or make me any more worthy. I'm worthy because he chose me and yeah. Jesus died on the cross for me. Yeah. I think that's huge is right. really like with anxiety, ident identifying like what is the root cause to right. like sometimes the things that you're freaking out about are not the thing that you're actually freaking right. out about and identifying that and then figuring out the lie that you're believing yeah. and then how scripture can address that. Yeah. That's huge. Right. Um, so last thing I wanted to kind of talk about is what are the consequences of believing these lies of right. not understanding the truth yeah. and what God says about yeah. this? I think, so we talked about this, like th these emotions, these feelings, mm -hmm. um, they are not 
wrong. Mm -hmm. It's when we, the problem comes when we become so hyper-focused on the stress or the anxiety and we're not looking to the Lord. Yeah. And that's when we start to solve our problems on our own. We can, when we believe that lie of, I have to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. I have to fix this anxiety or I have to, um, what's another example of something that we would be nervous about or anxious about? Um, how people view us. How or people something. view us. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Am I wearing the right clothes? Am I? Um, are people going to make fun of me at school? Whatever yeah. that fear is, when our identity is in what those people think, mm -hmm. we're going to go down a path that leads to destruction. Destruction. Yeah. We. Um, that's where we become. That becomes our idol. Mm -hmm. We focus on what people think of us versus yeah. what the Lord thinks of us, and that's where we get into um, really bad habits. I think about. If we believe that lie and we keep um, on that roller coaster of anxiety and fear without asking for help, mm -hmm. that's where drugs and alcohol and some other uh, escapism yeah. comes in. And we look for things to escape instead of taking our feelings to the Lord. Yeah. Um, when, whenever I'm on that roller coaster of that anxiety roller coaster, sometimes telling somebody about it, yeah. talking to a friend and asking them to help me hit yeah. the pause button. For me, like, processing through it verbally right. with my husband is really helpful. Right. And that doesn't always like necessarily ease it, but yeah. it helps me from, it helps me recognize like, yes, this is what I'm experiencing. Right. No, it's not normal. Like yeah. these, these thoughts are not accurate. Right. You know, um, it's a, m m the mantra that we always use is mm -hmm. like, your feelings are real. They right. just don't always reflect truth. Absolutely. And so recognizing that can be so helpful in right. not making those mistakes, yeah. not going down a bad path. Right. Right. I think the biggest thing, and, and this is something that I, I just want you guys to really understand, is don't do this alone. Yeah. If you're dealing with anxiety or stress and you just can't kind of get up that roller coaster or that spiral of fear and what is the outcome going to be? Am I ever going to um, fit in, in in this school? Am I ever going to be successful in this sport or um, get my parents to understand who I am? Mm -hmm. Don't do it alone. Yeah. You've got amazing leaders. Um, I don't know all your leaders, but I, <laughs> I assume they are amazing. I'm sure they, they are. are. They're pretty great. A plus. Go to your leaders. Share with a friend. Mm -hmm. Journal it down. If you don't know what to say, journal it first. Yeah. Write it down. Like, why am I feeling this? Let somebody process that with you yeah. so we can take that, identify the lie. Mm -hmm. um, my biggest struggle is I want people to love me. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I want people to think I'm awesome and funny <laughs> and great, but the approval of man means nothing. Yeah. And so when I am able to have a friend help me identify, wait, 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 the lie is you want these people to love you. Mm -hmm. What if you fail? Does yeah. that mean that God is any less great? No, yeah. it doesn't mean anything. And identifying that because when you bring light to something, I love to use this example. Okay, roaches are disgusting, right? <laughs> Texas roaches are the worst. They're awful. They're I ginormous, huge. Have you ever seen one like fly at you? Oh God. Mission Waco, they used to always Don't fly even, at us. Oh, so gross. <laughs> But I think about like roaches, they love the dark. Mm -hmm. And if you go into some like old, like nasty kitchen or something and you flip the light on, you hear like the roaches like scurry away to the dark. Yeah. Like those are the lies of the enemy. Yeah. He, the enemy wants us to sit in those lies. You're not worthy. You're not smart enough. Mm -hmm. You're never going to be successful. God doesn't love you. That, those are lies. Yeah. And the enemy wants us to stay there in that. Mm -hmm. But God wants us to have freedom. Yeah. So sharing that, so bringing it to the light. Yeah. God can help us heal. And having somebody walk alongside with you, don't do it alone. Yeah. Because it's hard. Yeah. Talk to your parents. If you feel comfortable, talk to a leader. Just talk to someone. Let people know. And you know, it is okay to be feeling anxiety and to ex be experiencing this. So many people do. And I think um, it's becoming more of a thing to talk about it, which I think is so helpful because it means that so many more people can get the resources they need yes. to work through it. Um, but let us know if you liked hearing about this. There's so much more we could talk about. We would love to do another um, one on this. Me and Louisa could probably talk about this forever. Um, yeah, we have our coffee. We'll have yeah, we'll coffee talk with for Amanda a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> so let us know, um, like our video, and comment if you want to hear more about this or if you have any other questions questions or any other topics that you want to hear um, in our Truth and Consequences video. We love you guys and we will see you again hopefully soon.